Hi guys, I'm Sam, and this is an intermediate English class. Um, today we're doing some reading and some in-context vocabulary um, about linguistics and monkeys. So come join us. Uh, if you're outside of class, if you're on Google or YouTube, uh, you can join us at verbling.com for group classes. Or um, you can take private lessons with me as well at verbling.com slash teachers slash Samantha. So come on in and we'll get started. The document is attached to the class as always. So you will have access to the document that we're working on throughout class. Come on in. Hello. Hi, Samantha. Hey, how are you? I'm pretty good, and you? Good, thanks. Where are you from? I'm from Russia. Okay. Have we met before? No, it's my first time with you. Cool. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So, uh, tell me about yourself. What do you do for a living? Where do you work? Uh, I'm a student. I am studied linguistic. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> this is a good class for you, then. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Um, yeah, it's mostly, we're reading about monkeys. I don't know if you've studied anything related to monkeys and speech. Um, no, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so it'll be something a little bit different. <laughs> um, what lev or what year are you in at school? Oh, can you repeat the question? What year are you in at school? What like year? First, first year, second year? Oh, first year, when I was at school. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, uh, well, okay. maybe 2000, it's beginning of 2000. Ah, okay, cool. Um, okay, so here's the warm up question. Oops. How can you define language? Very broad. <laughs> oh, How can you define it. language? What do you think? Uh, I guess uh, I can define a language with pronunciation. You know, different writers has different pronunciation. For example, German and English is different pronunciation. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, do you think pronunciation is like at the heart of the language? Yeah, I think yes. And of course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Got another one for you. I don't know what what else can I get. <laughs> it's a hard question. It seems yeah, simple, it's but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's another one. What is the role of grammar in language? Oh, uh, oh, of course, it's the second uh, define <laughs> <laughs> definition of language. Grammar. <laughs> okay, so you think pronunciation comes first, and then grammar? Yeah, and then grammar. Mm -hmm. And uh, grammar is a. Uh, mm, no language. Very simple but hard question. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, you can <coughs> you can build uh, a um, sentence if you know correct grammar in the language. Exactly. It helps you make yourself understood, right? Yeah. 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 Hi, Coney. Coney. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Oh, he's gone. I scared him away. Okay. Um, <laughs> how do animals communicate with each other? Uh, they use their special language, <laughs> I think, <laughs> with their voice. Do you think they scream. have some sort of language that we can't uh, understand? I guess yes. I guess <laughs> yes. <laughs> some special language. Monkey language. <laughs> How is animal communication different from human communication? Uh, well, human used uh, words and sentence and uh, verbal communication and animals used, I don't know, only their, uh, they cried <laughs> something and mm -hmm. uh, and it's all. <laughs> yeah. They, I wish we could understand animals. <laughs> In future. Sometimes, like, you see, like, I don't know, two cats or whatever, and it seems like they're talking to each other, and then, yeah. and you're like, what? what's going on there? Um, okay, one more question. What kinds of animals have been taught to communicate with humans? Like, I know they've, they've done lots of experiments and studies and things. I guess dogs mm -hmm. um, have been taught, and... Uh, Parrots, maybe parrots. <laughs> they can talk with us mm -hmm. sometimes. <laughs> I think with cats too, we try to and teach cats, them, yeah. but they don't like to listen. Cats, <laughs> dogs are more receptive. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also monkeys, right? They do yeah, lots of studies on monkeys. Um, so basically, today, uh, maybe it will stay like this, and you'll get a private lesson. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> Um, so we're just going to read through the text together. Uh, since it's just me and you right now, I'll correct your pronunciation a little bit if we have time. Um, we'll look at vocabulary, and then there's there are some exercises at the end that we can do. So um, I'm going to put it up on my screen, maybe, if it works. Come on. No, it doesn't want to work. Okay, I'm going to refresh. I'll be back in one second. Okay, okay. <laughs> there we go. It works that time. Okay, so uh, the title is Can Non-Humans Use Language? So we're going to kind of explore how language is used among animals. Um, so why don't you go ahead, can you read the first part for me? Okay, some linguists say that uh, is the ability of humans to acquire and use language that do, uh, I cannot understand this word, different types uh, them from all other animals. Yet other animals do, do uh, use symbols to communicate. Uh, bees perform a dance that tells other bees where they found source of nectar. The grunts and gestures of chimpanzees uh, signify uh, vary, varying desires and emotion. These forms of communication do not necessarily have the grammatical characteristic of language, however. Uh, notwithstanding this obvious difference, some experts have devoted many years of their careers to ongoing studies of the linguistic cap capabilities of animals. Good. Okay. Just a few words to pronounce. Do you see in the chat there? Yeah. Can you read the first one? Communicate. 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 Yeah, perfect. And the next one? Gestures. Oh, that was better. Gestures. Gestures. Good. Uh, what does it mean? 
gestures are hand um, hand movements, like uh. waving at someone or giving someone a thumbs up. They're gestures. Chimpanzees. 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 Do you know what a chimpanzee is? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Do you see any other vocabulary here that you that's new for you? Uh, what does it mean? Notwithstanding. Notwithstanding. Hi, Fergan. Hi. Do you know what notwithstanding means? Mm, wait a second. I I've seen this one before. Yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, I forgot. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You're allowed to forget. Oh, despite. Yep, it means despite or in spite of. Okay. Nevertheless, despite. Do you know those words, Sergey? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a synonym. So despite these differences, some experts have devoted many years to studying. Um. So devoted. I don't know what this. <laughs> you do or you don't? You uh, don't. don't. Okay. Don't. Devoted. Um. Does anyone? Hi, everybody. <laughs> does anyone Dedicated. know what devoted means? Yeah, uh, dedicated. Yeah, dedicated. So if you devote your time to something, it means that you spend your time on something. Um, dedicate your time. Um, to ongoing studies? No, I don't know. <laughs> ongoing. What do you think it means? Ongoing studies. Again, do you know ongoing? Yeah, um, it they're they're still doing some research on them, so it's not over yet. So ongoing, yeah, it's like con continuing, Continu continuous, still happening. Yeah. Um, ongoing That's studies. Mhm. Mm so they're still going on. That's where it comes. Still going on. Just kind of flip the words. Um, linguistic capabilities. What does that mean? The linguistic capabilities of animals. Basically, what animals can do linguistically, right? That's what a capability is, is something that you can do, how well you can do it. Um, right, so how can they communicate? If we're talking about linguistics, we're talking about their ability to, you know, pronounce words, utter sounds, that sort of thing. So how well can they communicate? Um, any other vocabulary in here that looks new for you guys in the first paragraph? No. no. What about nectar? Does everyone know what nectar is? It's up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is it? Um... When you're like uh, inside part of a fruit, like I don't know the part flowers. that gets you no. Know. Yeah, it's in flowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you're on the right track for good, but it's like the sugary, sweet stuff that's in plants that bees collect to make honey. Um, okay, good. Uh, uh, okay, for good, why don't you read the next paragraph? Oops. Okay. From where? Over the last. Over the last 40 years, several researchers have asserted that non-humans can master language. Chimpan chimpanzees and gorillas have been the most popular targets of study because at the maturity they are estimated to have the intelligence of two or three year old um, children who are usually well on their to learning language. Dolphins, too, have been studied because they have a complex communication system and exceptionally large brains relative to their body size. It would seem that if these animals are unable to learn language, their general intelligence could not be blamed. Instead, failure would be, attribu would be attributed to the absence of a genetic makeup that permits language learning. Good. Very good. Um, what does maturity mean? Maturity. Mm, being mature, adult. Yes, being being adult. Like you're you're grown up, you're mature. 
Um, I think we know intelligence. Uh, a complex communication system? What is complex? Intricate. Mm -hmm. Complex is intricate, complicated. So a complicated system of communication. Um, do you see any other vocabulary in here? Sergey or Perkin or Coney, hi Coney. <laughs> Anything else that looks new for you? That's better. Better. Yes. Okay, can anyone summarize the first two paragraphs? What did we just read? <laughs> Who's paying attention? <laughs> or Gen says, not me. <laughs> <laughs> what are they talking about in general? Is it talking about uh, this? Sorry, Sergey, go ahead. Uh, are they talking about that uh, everybody and uh, Everything had uh, their own language, and of course, monkeys and chimpanzees and gorillas can uh, learn languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So they're talking about um, the ability of different animals to use some sort of language and their linguistics, kind of what we were talking about at the start of class, right? Um, okay. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, hi, Coney. Coney, is your microphone working? Coney! <laughs> okay, maybe not. Um, okay, Sergey, why don't you go ahead for the third paragraph? Okay. It's, okay. Give me a second. The question of the question of whether non-human uh, mammals can learn to use language is not a simple one, for at least two reasons. First, language is more than just communication, but different just when animals are exhibiting that something more is the source of debate. Uh, what seems to dif uh, different? Different diet, human language from the gestures, grunts, creeps, creeps, whistles, or cries of other animals is grammar, a formal set of rules for combining words. Also, uh, because of their anatomical structures, non human mammals will never be able to speak in the same way that humans do. To test this animal's ability to learn language, Investigators, therefore, must devise innovation ways uh, for them to communicate. Good. Okay, so we have a list in here of different sounds, right? So it says, what seems to differentiate human language from gestures, grunts, chirps, whistles, or cries of other animals? So what are all of these sounds and movements? What is a gesture? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> using your hands to say something. Um, what is a grunt? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like you're pushing something. <laughs> <laughs> Making weird noises. <laughs> what is a chirp? It's, I guess it's whistle. Yeah, it's like a bird. Like the tweet noises that a bird makes. I don't think I'm going to try to do that one. <laughs> uh, it's red grunt thing. Yeah, that was easier. <laughs> what is a whistle? <laughs> There's a song about that. <laughs> There's so a song? Whistle, they... <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's not appropriate. Uh, okay. What is, a, what is a cry? Cries of an animal. <laughs> When they, when they cry. <laughs> yeah, <Loud>. so <laughs> you can cry with tears or you can just kind of yell, right? So it's like a. Um, yeah, <laughs> like the sound a wolf makes at, when there's a full yeah. moon. Can anyone do it? No. Come on. <laughs> Howling. <laughs> yeah, very good. Good wolf. Um, okay. So we have human language, and then we have all of these like weird animal sounds and animal languages. Um, okay, as far as vocabulary, are there any other words in here that are new for you guys? 
Uh, what does it mean? Mammals. Mammal. Mammal. I never heard it before. Mammals. Non-human mammals. Um, Furkan, do you know what a mammal is? Um, the animals. Uh, okay. Like whale, um, chimps, or the sort of animals uh, like under cat category that that does some specific things. For example, they um, they feed their animals with milk. Um, also, um, they uh, oh wow, it's hard to explain without bad words. <laughs> so warm-blooded animals, warm-blooded animals. Well, um, birds are warm-blooded too. Warm-blooded vertebrae. <laughs> um, they they have hair or fur mammals um, and like you said they use their milk to feed their young what else do we know about animal, mammals let me think um, I don't know that's basically it so, <laughs> no eggs yeah no eggs uh, I think the easiest way to kind of know what a mammal is is just to look it up in your language because <laughs> it's kind of hard to, uh, to distinguish. Um, Non-human mammals. So they say because of their ana oops. because of their anatomical stru structures, non-human mammals will never be able to speak like humans. What does anatomical mean? Um, their body. Their an anatomical. Yeah, basically their body, their how their body is structured. Um, okay, do you see any other new words? No. No. Okay, what what was this paragraph about? What are they telling us in your own words? Summarize. Well, it's. Uh... <laughs> 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 the test of whether uh, you're paying attention. <laughs> it shows that uh, we have different uh, sounds uh, not connected with human voice. Mm -hmm. Some chest or grunts, whistles. And uh, it said about non human mammals uh, who will never have the ability to speak. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So they're talking about testing animals to see, you know, what lengths their ability to communicate will go to. So how much they can get them to to express something in language. Um, what is a source of debate here? It says something is a source of debate. What are they talking here, about? This, oh. No, not the vocab, not the word debate. Um, what is the debate in the paragraph? Like what? What are they talking about? I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know, maybe language. <laughs> mm -hmm. Basically, ask the question of whether or not animals can really communicate rather than just make sounds. <laughs> so, um, okay, Firkin, why don't you read the next one for us? Why don't I read? Okay, David and Anne. Um, Premack, oh, it's their name, okay, sorry. David and Anne Premack taught their chimp, Sarah, to communicate by placing differently shaped chips, each symbolizing a word, on a magnetic board, 1971. Lana, a chimpanzee studied by Duane Rumbo, 1977, learned to follow instructions not to communicate by pressing keys on a special design computer, American Sign Language, the hand gesture language used by deaf people, has been used by Beatrice and Alan Gardner with the Chimp Weshu by Herbert Terrace with Nim Chimsky and Kenzie, a bonobo commonly known as pig, 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 Pygmy. Pygmy, yeah. Keep going. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to see. Okay. Oh, A pygmy chimpanzee studied by Sue Savage Rumbo, 1990, 1993. Learned to recognize spoken words to communicate by get, 
by both gesturing and pressing words, simple keys on a computer that would speak for him. Good. Gesture. 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 Good. Um, okay. What is this? The ASL? American Sign Language. What is American Sign Language? <laughs> <laughs> what is the sign language? language? Like, uh, you're doing something like this. And they understand you because they are deaf. Yes. <laughs> so making words and ex communicating with your hands, right? And it's an actual language. Um, does anyone know any sign language? No. I used to know how to say some simple things, but I'm sure I was doing it wrong. Um, my friend's brother is deaf, so she, does, she knows sign language, and she tried to teach me. But it's very strange because... If you move one finger, <laughs> like, just slightly the wrong way, you could say something really terrible, so <laughs> you have to be careful. Um, okay, so what are they talking about in this paragraph? I don't know. What are they talking about? I don't know. You read it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're talking about um, how those animals are following the sign language even though they can't speak very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're talking about trying to um, teach a chimp sign language, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Kanzi, a bonobo, commonly known as a pygmy chimpanzee. What is pygmy? Um, isn't that like Small. Uh, a tribe? In Africa, they're, they are really small, short. Yep, exactly. Exactly. So a pygmy chimp would be like a tiny little chimp. <laughs> tiny. tiny little chimp. Uh, pressing word. Okay. Any other vocabulary in this paragraph? No. No. No? Okay, Sergei, what, why don't you read the next one for us? Okay. Some no. of these animals suggested that they could spontaneously manipulate combinations of words to refer to things that uh, were not present. Vershu, Oana, Sa, Nim, and Genzi all mastered between 130 and uh, 500 words. Their vocabulary included names for con concrete objects such as apple or me, verbs such as tickle and eat, adjectives such as happy and big, and adverbs such as again. The animals incorporated their words into sentences expressing dishes such as you tickle me or if so good then apple. Uh, sometimes the sentence refer to things in the past. Finally, all these animals seem to enjoy the communication devices and use them spontaneously to interact and form virtual bonds with their caretakers. Very good. Okay, so we have a little bit of vocabulary here. Um, spontaneously manipulate combinations of words. Wow. What, do, what does it mean, spontaneously manipulate? Spontaneously, <laughs> when you do it to, from your mind. <laughs> yes, yeah, spontaneously is like randomly, right? Um, be yeah. able to do it without planning, no plan. Um, and then what is manipulate? Uh, use something. Yeah, so to like adjust, to change, kind of. So to spontaneously manipulate combinations of words to refer to things that were not present. What exactly does that sentence mean? <laughs> I don't know, you're a teacher. Well, I know what it means, I'm asking you. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Oh. Like Studies of these animals suggested that they like they can manipulate. they can change the um, word combinations according to what they need, and they can say like, yeah, I want this thing like water, even though water is not there by using our set of words and letters. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Good. Um, okay, and then they say their vocabulary. Included names for concrete objects. What is a concrete object? It's this. Yeah. It's something that physically exists. See. It's something concrete. 
Um, so la apple or me, as opposed to tickle, a verb. It's it's not a concrete <laughs> object. It's just an action tickling. that you do. Uh, does everyone know what tickling is? Like you go up to a baby and you. Because when you like, I guess you have. Ah, <laughs> uh, I can't make that sentence. What were you trying to say? Like for example, when someone um, scratch your armpit with a feather or something like that, you're like ah ha ha ha, and you start smiling and laughing. That's how you or laugh you too. Ah ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. The animals incorporated the words into sentences. What does incorporated mean? Used. Yeah, basically. Used Be yeah, basically. Use it, it to use something um, for a certain means that you need it for, right? Is to incorporate it. Um, mutual bonds to form mutual bonds. Um, bonds, it's like connection and mutual, it's uh, like, uh, I don't know, mutual. Mutual is like um, one person to another person. If you both agree on something or you both um, kind of do it together, then it's mutual. If one person goes, oh, you're my best friend, and the other guy says, no, we're not friends, <laughs> then it's not mutual. <laughs> so. Both parties have to agree, <laughs> and that's a collocation. Form bonds. They always that, those two words always go together to form a bond. It's simple, like cooperate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Do you see any other vocabulary in here that looks new for you? No, no. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Let's go. And. Then actually, let's skip this and go down to do some other exercises. We'll come back and read some more later if we have time. <laughs> um, so vocabulary in context. Find the words in each paragraph that match these meanings. So in the first paragraph, we have continuing and despite. We have to figure out which words match. So first paragraph, way up here. Which one of these words is a synonym for continuing? I'm going. Good. And despite? Oh, uh, not not withstanding. Awesome. And then the next one, complicated and adulthood in paragraph two. Maturity. Mhm. Mm and. Uh, Good. Um, complicated. Intricate. Uh, complex. 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 Yeah. Complex. Um, there's actually a pronunciation thing about the word complex. If you pronounce it. Complex yeah. or complex, there are different meanings for the word. Oh. Does anyone know the different meanings for complex? Okay. No. Complex. Oh, like this. I guess complex is like where you live. Yeah, exactly. It's like um, apartments where you live. Cool. So that's about the pronunciation. If I say it's a complex situation, I mean, it's complicated. If I say it's a complex situation, it, it means that it's a building full of people <laughs> who live there. So mm -hmm. it's it's different depending on how you say it. Um, good. Okay, the next one. Paragraph five: a close relationship and tools. Let's find. Where's paragraph five? Devices. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Good. Devices and mutual bonds. Very good. And then the next one, paragraph six. Co-workers, initial and dissimilar because of basic differences. So we didn't read this paragraph, but you can skim and scan and try to find these words. Co-workers, colleagues. Colleagues? Colleagues. Colleagues, yeah. Mm -hmm. Colleagues. Yep. Initial. And then initial. Initial. Oh, okay. I don't know. Nascent. Initial. Initial. There's the paragraph. 
What what in he, what does initial mean? The beginning. Yeah, inception. at the beginning, the first. So, do you see a oh. bold word that means oh. the beginning? Are you showing? Mm, one sec. Preliminary. Yeah, preliminary. Have you heard this before? Preliminary? Yeah. We, the, the word preliminary, it's usually used um, related to research. So preliminary conclusions means the, the first conclusions. So they did some research, and these were their first conclusions, but then later they will go back and find some secondary conclu conclusions. Um, yeah, it's an academic word, almost always used with research, preliminary. It just means the first. Um, and then, what's the next one? Dissimilar because of basic differences. Incompatible. Sorry? In incompatible. Good. Incompatible. 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 Good. If you're not compatible, you don't get along, right? Um, okay, good. Uh, hi, Magdi, what's up? How are you? <laughs> yes, I'm fine. Is, is my voice clear? Yeah, it's a little quiet, but I just turn you up and then it's fine, so don't worry. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay, good. Let's go on to the next one. Paragraph 7, we have a whole bunch of words. <laughs> so, act against a principle is the first one. You're doing some serious skimming and scanning here because this paragraph is enormous. <laughs> Look. <laughs> what is the word? Act against a principle. Act against a principle. Violate. Violate. Very good. What does violate mean? Act against the rule. <laughs> Thought you were gonna say act against a principle. <laughs> yeah, like to break the rules is to violate something. Um, right, act against a principle is to violate. And the next one is naturally, naturally. Inherently. Good. What does inherently mean besides naturally? <laughs> Coming from your genes. Yeah. So if you um, do something inherently, it means you just naturally in your blood, in your genes, you know how to do this thing. Um, so chimps do not inherently associate seen objects with heard words. So they don't do this naturally. They have to be trained. Um, if you don't need to be trained, then you can do it inherently or naturally. Uh, 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 okay, what's the next one? Short. Brief. Brief. Good, brief. Simple and brief. And right, it means short, not long. <laughs> uh, not concrete. So we talked about concrete before. So what is the opposite? In a, in a curate. Um, no, not quite. What does concrete mean again? Concrete. Um, not abstract. Right, not abstract. Like we said, uh, something physical, like a phone or a person, right? So what would yeah. the opposite be? Abstract. Abstract. Good. Now abstract. Um. Amb ambiguous could potentially kind of have a similar meaning, but uh, conveyed more sophisticated or abstract messages. What would an abstract message be? Um, like, oh, wow. Wow. like that. <laughs> I have no idea what you said. <laughs> it's because it's not English. That's the kind of thing that a chimp would do. Uh, okay, having more than one meaning. Multiple meanings. Oops. 
Uh, oops. More than one meaning. Inaccurate. Inaccurate? I guess. Maybe. Uh, what are you asking? More than one meaning. Oh, okay. Um, ambiguous? Yes, ambiguous. Um, inaccurate is a good guess, Sergey, because if something has more than one meaning, it's possible that we've been given, like, the wrong meaning, which would be inaccurate. So that's a good guess, but it's not actually a synonym. So if, if something has multiple meanings, it's ambiguous, which means it's, un, it's unclear what exactly it means, right? Um, so you have to interpret that somehow. So it says to in reinterpret ambiguous strings so they make grammatical sense. So what does that mean? To reinterpret ambiguous strings so that they make grammatical sense. Um, reinterpret ambiguous strings. Like, it's, we don't know what it means, but we are trying to figure out what it means, even though they are, they can't, they can come to different meanings. We try to find out what it means. Mm -hmm. Yep, basically. So an ambiguous string is like maybe a big long string of words that's kind of unclear and it could mean a few different things so you're kind of like, hmm, what are they talking about? And you have to try to interpret or understand it to make sense of it. Um, the next one is the process of changing. The process of changing. Maybe adaptation. Yeah, good. Adaptation, exactly. To adapt is to change. Um, mentioned as proof. Mentioned as proof. When you write an essay, and you have to use um, other sources, like, you know, a journal article or a newspaper. What do you do with your source? You have to show that you did not copy or that you did not uh, plagiarize. So what do you have to do? There's a verb in here that tells us that, what it's called. Which? Not plagiarizing. So it says... Uh, cited. Cited, yeah. To, to cite. So you cite your sources. Um, he says, Terrace cited the animal's lack of spontaneity, creativity, and expanding complexity and adaptation. So he cited this thing that has happened. He wrote it down. He mentioned it as proof. Okay. Um, paragraph 8, we have exceptional or special? Unique. Good, perfect, unique. That was fast. <laughs> You're a fast. Simple. You're a fast skimmer. <laughs> okay. Um, very small. Very small. Minimal. Minimal. Good. Minimal. Very, very small. Um, and nonetheless, nonetheless. Nevertheless. Good. Deduce. Deduce. This is a good word for writing essays. Deduce. In summary. Um, mm, not exactly. Well, uh, infer. <laughs> infer, yeah. In summary is like, well, you know what it means, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, um, so to infer something is to come to the conclusion, right, or to imply, imply, um, to deduce from the evidence that da 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 da. Deduce, 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 deduce. De -de -deuce. <laughs> there. <laughs> De <-de> <laughs> I don't know what that was. Uh, okay, great. So lots of vocabulary. Um, we're gonna go down and do. 
I think I'm going to skip reading comprehension. I'm going to skip this part and go to ah, dictionary skills if it will stop. Okay, dictionary skills. Um, abstract versus abstraction. So the point of this exercise is to kind of learn how to read really long, confusing, complicated um, things from the dictionary. When you're looking at a dictionary, you don't usually sit there and actually read the entire thing, right? When you open to a word, you never read the whole art thing. Well, I don't. I don't know if you guys do. But <laughs> in a dictionary, they give you the different meanings of a word, right? We know that words have multiple meanings. So for abstract, they've given us one, two, three different meanings. One, two, three, four. So what are the meanings for abstract? You have to kind of skim through. What's one meaning of abstract? You look at number one. We're on page six, by the way, if anyone's in the document. I think you better explain it. <laughs> okay. So abstract, for example, the first or one meaning, uh, you look at number one. Here's one definition of abstract. Apart from an object or thing. Okay, number two, another definition. You, I'm just skipping the example and going right to two. Difficult to understand is another meaning. So one is it's something up different or apart from a thing. Two, it's difficult to understand. What about three? Number three. What about it? <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> oh, abstract Of art. course, Magdi, you can participate. <laughs> So, could you read number three for us in the definition, Magdi? It's up on my screen. I can't hear you, Magdi. I don't know. It's your maybe your microphone. You're not muted, but I can't hear you if you're talking. I saw you unmute yourself, but it didn't work. <laughs> Try again. Unmute. You might have to refresh the Hangout. I'm not sure. OK. Sounds good. Um, Sergey, can you read number three? OK. Uh, concerned with designs or shapes that do not realistically represent any person or thing. Good. So doesn't realistically represent a person or thing, a design that doesn't, that isn't realistic, right? It's not realistic. Um, take something away from or remove to think of something that's apart from a particular instance. So something not concrete, again, right? Um, or it's a summary. What is an abstract of an essay? The abstract of an essay. It's a different meaning. Does anyone know? When you read an essay, sometimes at the beginning it says abstract, and then there's like two paragraphs, um, or a paragraph, and it's basically a summary that, you, that people will read before they read an essay to see if it's something interesting to them or what they need for their research. Um, and then we have abstraction. Uh, Firkin, what does abstraction mean? You can get the answer from the dictionary if you want. Okay. <laughs> An idea or quality thought of <laughs> work for any particular instance or thing. They're hard to understand. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I just learned this thing, so I don't think I can create a sentence with that. Okay, we'll read their examples. I did. The other one? Abstraction. Okay, in his abstraction, he didn't say hello. Right, so um, it's basically, yeah, it's the noun form of abstract, so it's something that's thought, it's, mm, how do I explain? Um, it's not concrete, again, it's separate from other things, they're hard to understand, they're complicated, confusing. Um, or it can also mean absent-minded, like you're not paying attention, you're distracted. 
by something else. Um, let me find another example. Extraction. Mm. Well, I was looking for another example, but I can't find one. Anyways, it's basically just the noun form of abstract. So again, an abstract quality, concept, idea, um, or being preoccupied with something else. So what we have to do is determine whether the sentences down here are true or false based on the definition. So it's hard to fit it all on the screen at once. <laughs> um, the first one, abstract artists paint pictures of people who look real. Is that true or false based on the definitions? It's true, on the least. Is abstract realistic? Unrealistic. It's unrealistic. So it says Not paint realistic. pictures of people who look real. What do you guys think? Oh, my bad. It's false. False, right? False. Um, give me an example of an abstract artist. I don't know if I, if you guys know too much about <laughs> art, but. I'm very bad. <laughs> Have you heard of Picasso? <laughs> Dolly. Yeah, Picasso. Dolly, yeah, Picasso and his crazy shapes and faces. Dolly and his surrealism. So those are abstract artists. They're not not realistic, right? Um, the word abstract may be a verb, a noun, or an adjective. True or false? Based on the definition. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> well, look at the definition. Do you see an adjective? No. What does this mean right here? Oh no! Where did it go? Ah! Here it is. What does this mean? A D J. Adjective. Adjective. <laughs> <laughs> so, there is no verb. Do you, yeah, good. Do you see a noun? Yeah. Right here. Right? Yeah. Do you see a verb? No. Are you sure? I guess yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look right here. TR dot V. Does what does that mean in dictionary terms? TR dot V. Uh, it means transitive verb. Oh. Transitive verb. So it there is a verb, it's just hiding in the middle. <laughs> so the verb means to take something away or to remove something. So you abstract something from something else. For example, abstract a law um, from an experiment. Uh, extract, uh, sorry, abstract um, a quote from an article. So it's similar to extract, but you take something away from something else. So it's true, right? There's all three options. Yeah. Um, a person who displays abstraction probably has something on his or her mind. Hey, Magdi, is it working? Your microphone? Yeah, I, I think it's working, right? Okay, good. Yeah, it's better now. Okay. Uh, so a person who displays abstraction has something on their mind. True yeah. or false? Yeah, of, co of course. Yeah, good. Because abstraction... Because he, he, he tries to, to imagine something in, in his mind and uh, and try to, to paint it to paint it uh, and visualize it right yeah exactly yeah so you're absent-minded right you're um, when I think of someone who is kind of an abstract person or who's experiencing abstraction or absent-mindedness I think of someone like imagining you know crazy shapes and imagining all of yes. these weird things <laughs> like someone who's just very distracted by um, yes. What's going around them? Going on around them. Uh, academic journal articles are usually preceded by an abstract. Preceded means it comes at the beginning. So before the article, there's an abstract. Is that true or false? True. Yes, true. 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 Good. And that's the definition about a summary, right? A summary of the article. Um, okay. The word table is an example of an abstract noun. 
the word table. False. False, yeah. Table is a concrete noun, which would be the opposite. It's concrete. Uh, the verb abstract can be followed by a direct object. To take away or remove something from something else. Yeah. Yep, good. True. True. The, an abstract idea is more specific than a concrete plan. No, it's false. Yeah, that's false. Good. Uh, the word abstraction has four syllables. <laughs> abstraction. <laughs> abstraction. How many syllables? Oh, I think uh, three. Three? Yeah, three. Three. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if you try to pronounce it with four, abstraction. <laughs> but <laughs> we, when you have T-I-O-N, it sounds like shun at the end. Shun. Um, abstraction. The suffix of abstraction shows that the word is a verb. What is a suffix? suffix. Um, it comes to the end of the word. Right. It's the end, the last part. So the suffix shun shows that the word is a verb. True or false? Do verbs end in T-I-O-N? Anyone? Do verbs end? I, 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 can't, I can't understand uh, that question. Okay, so a suffix <coughs> is the ending of a word. So the suffix yeah, okay. of abstraction is T-I-O-N, like this. And they're asking, um, does T-I-O-N come at the end of verbs? No, no, end of Right, no. exactly. So the suffix yes, of abstraction yes. shows that it's a verb. Is that true or false? Yes. True. Well, it's false. It says it shows that it's a verb, but it's not a verb, right? It's a noun. Um, yeah. Kindness is an abstract quality. Kindness is an abstract quality. True that. True that. <laughs> True that <homie. laughs> yeah. Is it concrete or abstract? Kindness. Can you like? Can you touch it? No. No. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's abstract. It's not concrete, not physical. Mm. Okay, so that was, you've got still in the article, this chart where you can complete, figure out the different forms of the words. Um, there's some more vocabulary here, more exercises. Fill in the blanks. There are some collocations, word parts. There's all sorts of vocabulary stuff happening here. Um, and I think the answers, oh no, the answers aren't at the end. Well, that's useless. If you decide to do it for homework, you haven't seen me throughout class. Hi! <laughs> you know why I'm doing that? Because the screen share is broken. So once I share my screen one time, I can never, I can never share it again. If I share it and unshare it, I have to refresh the whole Hangout. <laughs> to share it again because it's broken. So I can't share my screen again now. It's really, really annoying. <laughs> so I just was hiding and drinking my coffee. Um, okay. Uh, any questions? I know that was kind of tricky. Lots of crazy words. <laughs> okay. No. What's the next yeah, class? The next class is... Advanced well, grammar. Yeah, five o'clock, right? Yeah, there's a class starting right now. Um, advanced grammar, and we're looking at hypotheticals. And then a little bit later, we're doing IELTS speaking practice and some other stuff. So great, great. There's my Facebook, and that's it. So thanks for coming. Maybe I'll see you in the next class. Thank you for your class. Bye. Thanks. Good luck. Bye. See you.